The Piotnet add-ons for Elementor, or PAVE, brings a lot of extra control and functionality to your Elementor experience that is both for your free and your pro Elementor versions. And one thing that all of them have in common is responsiveness. It truly allows you that fine tuning control over going from desktop, going to tablet, and then going into cell phone displays. And that is one of the strengths of these extensions because everything focuses on responsiveness. You know, mobile first. One of these is called Responsive Background Color and Image, or Image and Color, which allows you complete control over what happens with an image when you go from your desktop to something like a mobile. And not only the size, but even which image is displayed. And in this tutorial, we're going to be looking at the images and the colors that can be adjusted responsively for backgrounds. The first thing that you have to get into your head is we are not talking about images here. So it's not the image element. It is background elements. It's background displays for your sections and your columns and other widgets. For example, if I go down and I add something new here, let's say I add a new section with three columns. And in here, I'm going to place an, a title. And I'm going to call this title something like here. That's all I'm going to do because I want it just to be nice visible and I'm going to make it nice and big and then I'm going to center it. Now for this, I can set a background just for this one. I can go to advanced and I go here to pave, let me just get rid of this, pave responsive background and I can set a background, but I don't want to do that. I'm going to do that to my columns. Yes, you can choose whether you want to do it for your element, your columns or your section. I'm going to choose columns in this example, just for display purposes. And then we go to style this time, and we choose pave responsive background. Then we enable the responsive background. The first thing that we can change is the color. Now, remember the key focus here is responsiveness. So we start with desktop color. So we can change the desktop color, make it green. Then we can go to tablet color and we can change now the color to something like no blue we don't want to do it we want to do it like black maybe and of course we have to change the size of the text as well when we are working with responsiveness and then we can go to cell phones and we can change the color again to something else so every time if i'm going to update it now i'm not going to care too much about the text size i just want to show you the responsiveness of the background color Currently, we will be in our desktop view. It is green. And if we go into mobile, it should be red. There it is red. And as we pull it and it goes into tablet, it should be black. Let me go back and see what I did wrong here. JP, ah, oh, we are in tablet. We're not. Okay, so tablet, excuse me. Let's make that black. Update it. Yes, you know. And let's go down after we've been criticizing ourselves. And now if we go from desktop, which is green, to tablet, which is red, to cell phone, which is black. And that is just how you can have responsive colors for any background, except images. We're not talking about the image element. We're talking about elements, columns, and sections. And what you can do with colors, you can do with images. So if I want to add a background image to this text here, I can do that. I'm going to grab this one over here. And what I want you to notice from the beginning is you'd even have responsiveness control over all these other settings, position, attachment, repeat, and size. You can choose for one, it's auto. You can choose for another one, it's cover. Currently, we are in our desktop view. Let's go now into our tablet view, and I have to keep track. I'm getting all nervous all over again. And I'm going to set this as well on cover. And then when we go into mobile display, choose food to make it look different. And let's also put it on cover. And now if we say update, and we go view it on the front end, we start in our desktop view. Scroll down. Here we go with that autumn scene. And then let's just drag it out for tablet first. Here we are still in desktop. And boom, there we go into winter. Wow, that's actually 
a nice effect. And from here, when we go into mobile, it displays the food image. That is pretty awesome, right? Yes, and you have to go think carefully where you are going to be using it. Don't just try and use something for the sake of it. It must have a purpose. I love to use this word gimmick because most of the stuff that you often get add-ons for page builders or WordPress, they are very gimmicky. And they do have an ultimate purpose, you know, that they can be used correctly, but people tend to overuse them. And, you know, changing and spending all your time in making your background images responsive without a purpose is just a waste of time. But it's a great feature and it can have application based especially on those functions over here where we are talking about the size and we are talking about the position. This would be very nice where you want to have control over where the image will display, which part of the image will display as you go from one from your tablet to your mobile and maybe back to your desktop. Then you can make sure you have your focus points on those images where you want them to be. That is it. And this is JP here with Websites for Beginners.